Well, I got the bike all loaded up, metal detector, shovel, things like that that I'm going to need. This morning started out windy and rainy, and now it's just windy. Could rain later. But up the road here is a National Forest campground, and I want to show you that. Beautiful scenery up here. Some other things to look at. Some things I need to tell you about. So come on along for the ride today. Let's get the sponsorship out of the way. This video is brought to you by Magicycle. And I encourage you guys to go to their website, check out their cruiser. This is the step-through cruiser I like so much. And also their new Ocelot Pro and their new Belt Drive commuter bike. Be sure and check those out. I'll be doing a, a review video on the Ocelot Pro. Nice day for a motorcycle ride. Yeah, this area is beautiful. Go down and check out this area. Yeah, this is just a mile above where we're where we're at, where we're camped. And look at all the water in the stream down where we're at. It's absolutely dry. Let's go down a hole somewhere. Pretty deep pond back in here. That'd be good for fishing. Today is Friday, and, if, and uh, the video for today is on the second half of installing Nikki's stove. So if you're wondering why I'm not answering comments yet, I'll get to them. <laughs> it's because we're out here having fun for the next week. So it, it's going to, I'm going to have to find some Wi-Fi or something so I can sit down and chat with you guys about that last video. But hey. Can you blame me? Look at this. I think I'll get a drink. I'm thirsty. Ooh, that's ice cold water. I think we're coming up on the uh, National Forest Campground here. Dry Wolf Campground. I'm guessing that this place is packed. Just judging by all the outfits that went driving by us yesterday where we're boondocked. It's a really nice campground though.
Well, there's a campsite open on my left back there. Hmm. We'll go check out the prices for you. This is a pretty place. It opens up on Memorial Day every year. Okay, let's see here. It's $15 a night. And um, looks like $7.50 with a Golden Age Pass. So for us old people, it's $7.50. Yeah, there's campsites open. There's a nice one here. Look at this. You can see we still got snow on the ground up here. It's pre pretty warm now though. If you, I think it's about 65 degrees here. Not bad. Now there's another campsite open on my right side. This goes back to a big day use area. Yeah, there's picnic tables here. This is day use only, only in this area, but look how nice this is in case you want a picnic. Very nice. Seems pretty quiet. I don't hear any generators. There's lots of campsites available. I'm shocked. Well, it's looking to me like the gas prices are affecting people a lot more than you'd think. I mean, I know they're sure affecting Linda and I, but for this, for a nice weekend like this, for all these sites to be open in here, yeah. Well, let's go see if we can find a place to do some metal detecting. I'm kind of looking for a little side stream somewhere. I think I'll go up the mountain a little more. See what we can find. Ooh, windy. At least I'll have a tailwind going back because I got a headwind now. There's campsites here, and generally when you, up, I don't know about other places, but yeah, I do. Uh, when you metal detect around a campsite, all you find is melted aluminum and pull tabs, and that's about it, and bottle caps. But um, I want to go down along the creek and look for gold anyways, and this place has been mined, I can tell. So uh, chances of finding something are pretty uh, slim, but uh, it's fun to try. And that's my excuse, so I'm gonna go do it. This right here is moose scat. Oblong pellets like that. And this is a perfect place for moose. The creek bottom with all the willows and everything. Yeah, nice habitat.
fire. See on a long trail like this, it's wire. <laughs> well, I ain't going after that. Well, I just dug something up here, but it's just a big old hunk of iron. <laughs> big iron gives you pretty nice signals. <laughs> Anyways, piece of sheet metal. So we'll leave her be. Well, it was up in here somewhere that Linda and I came across a grave. We were metal detecting back when we first started and going along some creek and we came across a grave just out in the middle of nowhere out here. But uh, it was pretty expensive to ship your body back to St. Louis or wherever it was you came from back in the old days. They pretty much just planted you wherever you died. Uh, not always, but for the poor folks, it was just too hard to get you out. That's a grunt. That's iron. There's one channel that I've watched in the past. I haven't watched it in a long time, but the guy is here in Montana and he goes to where he sees hillsides that are bedrock, you know, solid rock coming down and he uh, shoots the cracks for gold and he carries special tools that he used to dig out the cracks and everything. And he's had some pretty good luck doing that. But I got something I need to tell you. I made a mistake in my last bike ride video where I said that e-bikes were okay on national forest trails where bicycles were allowed. Well, as it turns out, I unintentionally gave you some bad information. It's not entirely true. For the general rule is e-bikes are not allowed on non-motorized trails in the national forest. You can go tearing through on a mountain bike, but you can't take an e-bike through. And well, let me give you some more background. In the United States, 46 states do not recognize an e-bike as a motorized vehicle, including Montana. And you're allowed to ride them on the sidewalks, in the crosswalks, anywhere you could ride a, a normal bike, including on state land, on trails on state land in, the, in these states, for the most part. It pays to check with your own state. Also, in national parks, the general rule is you can ride an e-bike anywhere you can ride a regular bike on any of the non-motorized trails that allow bicycles, you can ride an e-bike. For some reason, the National Forest has decided that an e-bike is an e-motorcycle, and there are e-motorcycles. There are e-motorcycles that will keep up with a 250 Enduro <laughs> or whatever the latest Yamaha dirt bike is. But anyways, uh, I'm showing my age here. Anyways, there are e-bikes that are very powerful and very fast. And uh, you, you can even see them in, in uh, motorcycle races and they'll be e-bikes. But, I mean, they'll be e-motorcycles. Then there's e-bikes. And, and from what, if you watch my channel, an e-bike is just a bicycle that gives you some pedal assist. And you got a throttle you can use if you want to rest, but it doesn't go any faster than a regular bicycle, and it doesn't give you much more power either. It does make it possible for us older folks who couldn't ride a regular bike to be able to ride at all. And that's where I'm at. Not to mention that e-bikes generally, the ones that are made for trails, generally have fat tires on them, and they're very gentle on the terrain and gentle on the ecology. Now, I think this thing with the National Forest Service is going to change. I already see that down in Tahoe, uh, the Tahoe National Forest, they've already had to change the law to allow e-bikes in that area. And it appears that I got my bad information because I looked up a certain forest and it said that a certain national forest and it said that e-bikes were okay and I assumed that e-bikes were okay in national forest. It turns out it's up to the local management. So here where I ride and where I was riding in that video, I was illegal. So I had to take that part out of the video and repost the video again. Uh, but I learned my lesson there. So my point is, for the time being, uh, check. 
if you're going to go ride in national forest, you got to, you got to check first and you got to, the way you have to check is you have to call because you can't look it up. You cannot find this information without placing a phone call and asking them. Now, last year when I checked, um, it was, you could find it. And uh, this year you can't find it. And you know what else you can't find? You can't find that law that says that rule where I mentioned you got to stay in your campground, your campsite for, you can't leave your campsite unattended for 20, more than 24 hours. I can't find that anywhere this year. And I know that was a reg. So there you go. Things are confusing. I think that this e-bike thing is going to change for the National Forest in the near future, hopefully this year yet. But in the meantime, be careful. Don't do what I told you to do. And uh, now I'm staying off the non-motorized trails in my own national forest here. If I had a regular bicycle, I could go journey and ride up them. But for some reason, the e-bikes are, are illegal right now. Uh, so let's hope that changes soon. I went to sit down here and I got a palm full of stickers. Not fun. Well, seeing how it's so nice out, let's go see if we can find another place to play around. Lion Falls, one mile. Huh. Wonder if there's a, if the road goes to it or if it turns into a trail. So far, I see road. Okay, I see, it's only a quarter of a mile. All right then, I'm gonna go check it out. Hey bear, coming through. This is a lot of up. Too bad I didn't bring the metal detector with me. <laughs> I'm just walking up the trail to see the falls, but look at the bedrock coming down here with the steps. There'd be a chance of finding gold in those, below those steps, I suppose, and in the crevices of the rock. Next time. Look at this beautiful area. Wow. God, it's almost luminescent. The moss here is kind of a yellow green and an orange. Let's see if I can bring that out in the video. And in front of me is the falls.
for a while. Almost expect to see leprechauns jumping around here somewhere. Back up here on one side is a nice moss covered bed with a long overhang. Person could shelter in there really comfortably. Well, that was worth the climb. Lion Falls. That was nice. See what other kind of trouble we can get into today. All right. All downhill going back out of here. back to the main road. I check the load here after coming down off that rough road. Looks like everything is still here. Okay. Well, so far it's been a long run without having to pedal. got stung by a bee underneath my helmet strap. Yeah, that's smart. Yeah, ow, that hurts. I guess the stinger came out. That's smart. I used to work in a, in a um, honey making facility in eastern Montana and uh, you'd get stung a couple times a day. <laughs> the, the air was filled with bees in there. And when you'd go in and out the screen door, there'd be just bees all over it on the inside and the outside. And as long as you didn't touch them, they never stung you. The only time you got stung is when you picked up a super or something and, and uh, you happened to trap one underneath your hands. That would happen about twice a day. And it was kind of like you just shook it off and kept working. <laughs> yeah. Boy, honey is pretty important stuff, not to mention the things we get from it. Things like mead. I've been making mead this past winter just for fun. Three pounds of honey in a gallon jug, fill it up the rest of the way with water and add like a champagne yeast to it or something. Um, I got kind of good at it. I mean, it doesn't taste awful. <laughs> It's pretty strong stuff. The best one I made was a cherry mead. And that's one where I actually let the cherries ferment with the mead. Came out pretty nice. Came out like a cherry wine. Sure was easy to make though. I guess the trip in was all uphill because I've just been coasting and coasting all downhill. Oh, here's a little bit of an up. And more down. Yeah, 
Yeah, coasting downhill at 30 miles an hour. Woohoo! Well, this spring seat is making all the difference in the world. <laughs> I'm getting a fairly smooth ride. Had to slow down for that cattle grade. I just don't trust them. Sometimes they can be one heck of a bump. This is one of the most beautiful areas right down through this next half a mile here. Always like coming through here. There's a cabin over here. Oh, it's hard to see. Let me show you. There's somebody staying there right now. Can you see it back there? That's called the Dry Wolf Cabin. You can rent that cabin and you can rent a lot of other cabins here in Montana. They're owned by the state. And it also includes um, Fire lookout stations, if you want to hike in, you can rent those and stay overnight in those too. Years ago, my daughter Nikki and I rented this cabin that I just showed you. And it sleeps like six or eight people in there and it's heated. <laughs> and I remember I was impressed because there was actually a landline in there and we were able to call Linda and tell her how we were doing. See here, it's the dry wolf cabin. And this is the entrance to it here. So Nikki and I came here and we stayed a few nights and we, we home based out of here and we did survival training. I had never done that with her before and we did that. We hiked up into the woods. In fact, we hiked clear up into the rocks up there. We had a blast and uh, we did a survival thing where, you know, practicing being lost in the woods, building a lean-to shelter, getting a fire started. Taught her to check what she had in her day pack and what she had in her pockets and make the best use of it. And uh, plan on having better things next time. <laughs> and on that trip, we ended up having a real life emergency. We went out for a drive with the Suburban and took another road and it got real icy and the the Suburban just slid off into the ditch into about two or three feet of snow. And now we were in trouble. So we ended up having to dig our way out with a little tiny trenching shovel, military shovel. Nikki took a buck saw or a bow saw that we had and she went into the woods and started cutting branches because the front right was spinning and the rear left was spinning of the four wheel drive and we couldn't go. So I had to jack up the rear left and put a chain back there and she put all kinds of branches in front of the Suburban on the right side and we eventually got out. But it was kind of interesting because we got stuck and then, the, then I said, well, here we are. What do we have on hand? Uh, good lesson for all of us. <laughs> so be sure and check out State of Montana cabins and uh, look where you can see reservations. You can make reservations online. Now the Railway Cabin is a beautiful, beautiful place, nestled in the woods with a creek behind it. Uh, my granddaughter, Ricky, was sleeping in her chair in the back and we pulled up in front of the cabin and she opened her eyes and she says, is this where God lives? And we said, oh, this is where we're staying tonight. And she said, is God out in the yard? I was just talking to him. <laughs> in her dream. Well, that was a fun ride, even if I didn't find any gold. It was fun looking. I found Linda. Yep. That's your gold. 
Hey guys, thanks for coming along on the ride. I hope you enjoyed it. I sure as heck did, except for the bee sting part. <laughs> but anyways, thanks a lot. And be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you around.